I am waking this guy up very early. If you're on YouTube, you can see him. There he is. He's Grant Field. He's like the instructor du jour right now. Grant, thanks for waking <laughs> up early, big guy. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. No, it wasn't a problem. It wasn't a problem. <laughs> yeah, this is standard procedure for you with uh, clients around the world. You've been down in Australia. Uh, before we go anywhere, though, I want to put you in context for our audience. Please tell us a bit about you, how you came to where you are. Yeah, so um, I guess I started teaching or coaching fairly early on. Um, I did a traineeship here in Australia um, at the age of 19. So I sort of finished that at 21. And yeah, like most people, I thought that I should play and, and I spent a year playing. And but, but basically, even before my traineeship, I was helping people with their game. And yeah. I started, um, you know, when I was out playing um, professionally, I was more worried about what other people were doing. And, and I thought, this, this is crazy. You know, I, I should go and do what I actually want to do, which is help people. And I sort of went from there. And um, I started coaching, like I said, pretty much um, a year after I finished my, my traineeship. And, and like I said, even though I was coaching through that time, um, I, I started full time. And then, um, you know, 25 years later, okay. here we are. And, you know, it's been a great journey. And I mean, you know, for me, um, I was never, I never sort of started out with, you know, the goal of coaching two players or anything like that. I, I wanted to help people. And then I sort of, you know, found a passion in helping younger people, um, you know, achieve their goals. And, and that was sort of the, the path I went down and then obviously led to, uh, to where we are today. Our career is parallel in many ways. I mean, I started teaching in 96, also wanted to play, played some, realized I wasn't that good, couldn't beat the guy in my household. That sort of put things into perspective yeah. for me. And, yeah. and I got into instruction because I also, like you, had found that I was very interested in the how and the why and all that sort of stuff. And so yeah. it's, it came kind of naturally to me. So before we dive into online lessons and that sort of stuff and lessons from Cam, uh, your foremost client, um, I, I want you to advise the aspirant golf instructor here. The, 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 the guy perhaps who's playing is like, I'm not that good. Or the guy who just wants to teach a girl, whatever, what take do you share for them from them? Because you started at the very beginning and have built yourself up now to, to one of the sought after guys in the world. Yeah. Look, I think, um, you know, for me, it was, it was never about that. You know, like I started out like truly to, cause I loved helping people mm -hmm. and I had a passion for the game and I, and I wanted to get, better at um, understanding the game more and and that's sort of where it started and I think you know some people start out coaching um for money <laughs> yeah. and I think that's a, a big fault you know I think <laughs> early on you know don't expect it to be uh you know what you see other guys doing but <laughs> I think you know like anything in life if you're passionate about it and it's something that you really truly want to um pursue like I, I've never thought about doing anything else mm -hmm. you know like I've never thought oh maybe I should try this or you know like you know, I love coaching. I love spending time with the people I spend time with. And, and, you know, even now with obviously um, a little bit more on my plate, you know, like anybody that wants to learn, I'm happy to help, you know? So I kind of, for me, that's, that's the first thing. And the second thing is go and spend as much time as you can with other coaches, you know, just go and watch and learn and ask questions. And, and to be honest, most coaches, more than happy to help because they were in your position once yeah. um i think you know like i said i i have guys all the time come and and want to sit in and more than happy to have them there and you know ask questions and and if i can help in any way then you know as like i said i sort of go from there okay i'm gonna i'm gonna rant a little bit you know i'm a recovering golf instructor who now carries a microphone for a living and i call your boy often it just whenever he's in contention it seems like i get him um yeah the one thing is I watch Cam um, and I've seen him from when he was a youngster and he just showed up in the States. He sort of remained true to Cam and mm. things tighten up a little bit and I can see your, your fingerprints there a little bit. There's never any real wholesale changes. And when I talk to him, I try and get stuff. I'm like, what are you guys working on? And he goes, uh, and then pinners will sort of say, yeah, we're working on your posture a little bit. And he goes, okay. Mm. And, and so there's a, what seems to me a real playing influence to your teaching because we live in an era where everything's measurable. <clears throat> and I, I hesitate to say, I see so many youngsters that know data and all this sort of stuff, but they don't really play very well. What's mm. your take over there? So um, the way I look at that is, you know, I look at it this way. If, if somebody, and let's take Cam, you know, when he first was heading out there, the goal is to be one of the best players in the world, right? Mm -hmm. 
um, I look at it that is what you're doing good enough to do that? Okay. okay. Right. And and if the answer is no, which at that stage it usually is, is it A, a work in progress or is it B, that it will never be? Okay. Right. So mm -hmm. if it's a work in progress, then we need to stay on track because a lot of times improvement doesn't come from doing something different. It comes from getting better at what you currently do. Preaching, okay. brother. <laughs> I love yeah. you. <laughs> so, so, so for me, in a lot of aspects with Cam, that was the case. Now, he needed to get bigger. He needed to get a little bit stronger. He needed um, more time. He needed to get used to, like, growing up in Australia, it's, it's totally different conditions to what we play in, you know, all those sort of things. But I knew that the skills that he had were going to be good enough if we stayed on track. Yeah. So I wasn't of the opinion that, that things needed to change. They just needed time, you know, like, like all of us, you know, whether it's coaching with it, you know, the more time you spend doing it, the better you get at it. Right. So whereas a lot of people chase improvement because they're after the now, you know, so, so with Kim, it was like, if we stay on track, we know what works. We know if we can continue to get better at it, it'll work better, you know? And for me, um, I felt we had, most of the things we needed from a, a technical point of view and 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 you know like anybody at times it sort of falls off track and but we know what to go back to right yeah. so we've got a blueprint we know when he plays well what it is you know so we're not we're not searching for new stuff yeah um and and to his credit you know like he's never wavered from that and i think you know to be honest that we're seeing the fruits of that that now you know now no question there's there's a myriad of other things that have made him to where he is today, you yeah. know, that are not just technique or not, you know, my influence that, you know, there's, there's a heap of people that have influenced Cam's, you know, development. But from that point of view, I think um, we've really stayed the course in what we believe and um, he hasn't, you know, followed trends. And, and it doesn't mean that he doesn't use TrackMan. It doesn't mean he doesn't use, you know, um, some 3D every now and again. Like, you know, we use those things for reference points. Um, but we, you know, um, to give you an example, you know, we, like with his wedge play, you know, we'll, um, if it's a distance wedge swing that we're working on, there'll be a certain speed, a certain loft, yeah. and a certain carry number we're looking for. So you'll see him warm up, but that's what he's looking for. You know, he's not looking at, you know, anything different. He's going, okay, is that the speed I need for that swing? Is that the loft I need? And is that the distance it's going? And if that's what it's doing, you know, he knows he's in play. You know, it's like his putting mirror, you know, like every session starts with his mirror, you know, so he checks in with his, you know, eye alignment, posture, balance, you know, is he start line right? You know, so it's the same checkpoints. And and to his credit, you know, like I said, he hasn't really wavered from any of that. And, you know, like I said, I think that's where we're seeing the fruits of that, um, you know, starting to come to a fruition now. You know what? You've just said a few things that I'm sure a lot of students listening to you were like, oh, cool. I wish my teacher would do that. But then I'm sure the young teachers have perked their ears up going, okay, this is very interesting. But I want to turn to the shadow side of this sort of thing, because you talk about, you know, being patient, allowing the thing to take time. You know, you use technology for its purpose. You don't allow it to start to govern you too much. Mm. But that takes a heck of a lot of discipline to stay there, especially if you've got a client who's somewhat demanding. So I, I want you to talk mm. about that, too, because, you know, the management of the students is such a big deal if you want to be patient with progress. Yeah, look, and, and you know, I've had it the other way where, you know, um, I was working with somebody who, you know, was, I thought, tracking nicely mm -hmm. um, and and decided to make some different decisions. And yeah. Yeah, at this stage, it hasn't, it doesn't seem to have worked, you know, where he wanted to go, but. Um, <laughs> Has he come know, back groveling you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not that. It's just, look, I mean, everybody does what they think is best for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but I think a lot of people are impatient and unfortunately it's, it's life, you know, like, um, you know, you look at the, the most successful businesses that they all play the long game, don't they? Right. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and it's hard with a sport like golf because you're looking up the range and you're going, well, that guy's doing that and that guy's doing that. Why am I not this? And, you know, so, and, and you've got to have trust in the person that's advising you. And, you know, I mean, you know, fortunately now, like you would, you know, you know what good looks like, right. Yeah. So you can advise people on, Hey, look, that's just not going to be good enough or yeah, you know, that is good enough. We need to learn more about what we're doing and, you know, you need to spend more time competing and you need to spend more time on big golf courses and you need to, you know, understand how to play those places. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing wrong with your skill. We need, you know, more time. So, um, and look, you know, some people will buy into it a hundred percent. Some people won't. And unfortunately, generally it doesn't work in their favor. 
you know, not always, but you know, generally it doesn't work in their favor. Your point is, point is so well-founded and your resume speaks for itself. And like I say, as I've watched Cam grow into the world's number two player, or whatever it is when we record yep. this thing, yep. he always just kind of did Cam, you know, and you could yep. see the flashes there. But yep. he just sort of stayed the course, I guess, is what I'm trying to get out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and like I said, to his credit, he wholeheartedly has stayed the course. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and there's plenty of times and, and you know, the, the environment you're in, like there's plenty of distractions if you want them to be right. Yeah. And, you know, like when first, the cam first went out there, you know, he was a 20, 21 year old that looked like he was 15, mm-hmm. you know, he hit the ball nicely, but, you know, wasn't strong and didn't hit it long. And a lot of those golf courses early, he struggled, you know, Um, but, and, and obviously, um, you know, short game wise and and competitive wise, he he was able to to stay out there and then, you know, he got a win and then, you know, it sort of just kept building. And if you look at Cam's career, there's only one year that he hasn't earned more money and and moved up the ranks the following year. Yeah. You know, Um, so our goal has always been, just to get better, you know, and if we get better every year, you know, and I say this to young guys all the time, like, you know, the, <clears throat> with the, the Queensland Academy of squad sport and um, squad and things like that, you know, from where you are right now as an elite, you know, amateur player, if you get better every year for the next 10 years, uh-huh. you'll be on a main tour somewhere. Yeah. You know, really? um, and, and like, it sounds easy in theory, but most people are not prepared to do that. No doubt. Okay. I, I guess this question is a bit of a segue into the topic. Um, but I remember it was Tory Pines a couple seasons ago, and you speak of Cam getting longer. And he was teeing off the 12th, which is that mammoth par four. And I'm just, it's a practice round, right? Yeah. And I catch up with him and he hits his tee shot. And I'm like, whoa, you know, what's happened to you kind of thing? And I was yeah. like, that was nice, man. And he goes, he, he's a big smile on his face. I'm, I'm like, Cam, you've picked up some gas off the off season, during the off season. Yeah. This was pre-COVID. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, I'm fiddling around with a longer driver, longer shaft. Yeah. Yeah, which didn't like okay. Now, to his credit, now which <laughs> lasted one round, yeah, <laughs> didn't last. Yeah, I know, that's the actually thing. two that's, rounds, but yeah, yeah, one good round and one um, very average round. Well, that's the thing, there's so much to learn from that interaction because there's this chase for power, it was all Bryson, 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 you know, the whole thing, yeah. So, Cam's in the longer club, hit, 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 one, two rounds. No, it doesn't work, ditch this thing, I'm going back to what I do. There's a lesson for the viewers and the listeners in that, I, I, I believe, yeah, you know, and and I think, you know. Like it happens a lot in golf where, you know, a trend will come along, right? And and I'm in no way, shape or form saying that distance isn't a benefit, right? But, you know, it, it become a big thing, right? And like you said, and, and if you look now back at the, you know, the world top 10, you've got guys who are, you know, good distance, yeah. you know, whether it be Cam, Morikawa, Cantlay, you know, um, Matt Fitzpatrick, you know, but they're not that next right. level of distance, yeah. are they, right? So... You know, and I talk to players all the time about, you know, there are a lot of skills and, and you know, we term them, you know, visible and non-visible skills that make people good, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, the visible stuff the stuff you see when you stand on the range and they're just pumping drivers and you think, this guy's amazing. Mm-hmm. But what are all the non-visible skills that you see in guys like Cam and Morica, you know, that allow them to be the best in the world? And I think um, they're some of the ones that <clears throat> people don't pay attention to, you know, especially young coaches. Cause you know, if you haven't seen it, like it's very easy to be overawed by, you know, power and, and a ball flight, ball speed, you know, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ball speed, you know, I mean, hear it all the time. What's your ball speed? Well, you know, is it far enough? And, and the thing is for, for somebody like Cam, who, you know, is now two or three in strokes gain approaching the green, you know, and I think that doesn't get talked about enough. Like we, we talk about his putter and his chipping, but he's one of the best iron players in the world, right? So uh-huh. for him to be in the fairway is far more advantageous than, you know, 20 meters in the rough for him, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think, um, you know, the focus on, you know, and if he can be where he is around that 300 yard mark, you know, like, and, and you look at the last few weeks, um, you know, a lot gets talked about with, with Cam's driving. And one of the things it, we've sort of, he's just gone back to hitting his shape, which is his little fade. When he does that, you know, the last couple of weeks, he's been sort of 20, 30 in driving. Now, if, if he's 20, 30 in driving statistically, yeah. well, we're he, going okay. A, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's yeah, catching checks. Out at the top of that leaderboard, right? So, for him, you know, it's sort of almost um, being more one-dimensional off to the tee, you know, will allow him to be, you know, um, better across right. the board. Oh, I love the take there. Okay, um, into that. You are on Skillist. Uh, I'm on Skillist. I'm sure you're highly sought after. I think it's a, 
I think Baden Schaff has done a wonderful job of yeah, he's done amazing. This this he's platform for people around the world because I grew up in South Africa, didn't have magazines or TV or anything. I, I books I had like books and magazines, swing sequences, cut them out, no video or anything. Learn to play like that. Now you've got access to you and me and whoever else is on this platform from wherever you are, and it's going bananas. Mm. But I want to empower the viewer and the listener to do this correctly. Because yeah. you can just go through then, oh, I love the sound of this guy. I'm going to send him a lesson and you pay your money and you upload the swings and stuff. And then you get stuff back and a lot of folks don't do well. Um, so so let's talk about those lessons. And I want to kick that off with your take on on just, you know, taking digital lessons from someone who's away from you. Because you, for the entire season during COVID, were having Tuesday FaceTimes with Cam while yeah. you were in Australia and he was in the U.S., yeah, so I guess um, two things there. You know, obviously with Cam, um, you know, we'd had 16 years of prior um, contact. So mm -hmm. that side of things was probably a bit easier. Look at, you know, for me, I I see his swing when I sleep. So, um, <laughs> you, you know, I kind of knew what I was doing there. But, you know, with, with the online lessons, you know, to be honest, originally I was not skeptical, but I was like, oh, you know, I don't know how this is this is going to go. And, and then I started doing them and, and I actually had really good success and I had a lot of people that were really happy and, you know, um, and, and were really comfortable with, with what was happening. So I was like, Oh, okay, this is, you know, far more advantageous. And then one of the big benefits is, you know, that small contact more often. Yeah. Um, but I think also with that, you, sometimes from a student point of view, you got to be careful that you, you know, like, cause as a coach, you know, you, you give the little bit of a feedback and, and, and it goes really well. And, it's when they want to go too quick yeah. um, with well, the feedback. So like, okay, thing. I've got that's that. Back to your patience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've got that. What's next? And it's like, well, hang on a sec. <laughs> you know, you've got that in a simulator in a in a room somewhere. You know, can we take that to the course? So, yeah. I think <clears throat> the biggest thing I, I think is is beneficial is, um, you know, like I said, that you've got that more consistent contact, mm -hmm. um, depending on what sort of you know program you're on, I guess, um, but like you said earlier, having access to, you know, to whatever coach you decide to have access to rather than, you know, just who's around the corner. Now around the corner, you might be lucky and, and you know, if you, you might be around the corner from somebody and they can take a lesson from you. That's fantastic. But mm. that's not in everywhere around the world, is it? So, um, so I think that in itself is, is a massive plus. And like you said, you know, I mean, um, it's grown massively, but again, get back to your point. I think the concept is great. Just don't, go too far too soon with what you're trying to achieve as a student would be um, my message. How about the communication to the teachers? Because when someone reaches out to me before I do anything, I've got the videos already. I send mm. them a note back and I've got like a list of questions that I'm asking. Yeah. Them yeah. I'm the same. I, yeah. Yeah. I need to know. So, so yeah. please share the folks. Yeah. I'm the same. I, I you know, I'll, like you, I'll get the swings and it's like, and there's no context. And yeah. it's like, okay. So tell me more about this. Tell me more about that. Tell me, you know, how do you hit the shot? Because obviously, you know, from a from a coaching point of view, you can generally see the patterns that are emerging from a swing, but you know that doesn't tell the whole story, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm the same as you. I would generally fire back a number of questions and and start that conversation, and then you know figure out the best way that I think I can help that person, you know, about, rather than just reply to the swings. Yeah. Well, how about data? Do you ask folks for data, or is it just like, all right, what's your tenancy? What side of the course you're scared of? You left or right-handed injuries, that sort of stuff. What questions? Just depends. Just depends. Again, generally, you'll um, you'll find that um, people that have got access to that will give you access to that. Yeah, right. You know, so or in my opinion, anyway, like if somebody's standing indoors with track man behind them, and you know, they'll generally give that information. If they, you know, if they're outdoors on the range and they just got, you know, then they probably don't have access to that. Um, you know, one of the things for me, and and I think, um, you know, the emergent emergence of indoor, you know, facilities has been great, and I think. Um, you know, there's there's a real place for it, but I'm also mindful as a coach to what they do on course. Yeah, like, well, that's you what know, I love so, about you, and I'm glad you say so, that. So, because it's great to stand straight on in a square room and hit a stock shot. Unfortunately, golf doesn't do that that often. So, you know, <laughs> like I, I and like you said, I I talk to players all the time and about you know environment influencing their swing patterns right so they'll go oh you know i was hitting great and i got to the fourth and you know i hit that left one again it's like yeah because there's trouble down the left the wind was off the left and you know like 
that's why you, you you made that move, right? Not because technically your swing is flawed. It's just you're responding to that environment and trying to, you know, manage it, so to speak. You know, so, and you see it all the time, you know, like, because I talk to players about, you know, that, that there's, and like I, I sort of look at there's nine different sort of shaped holes, yeah. right? So you've got straight, straight curving right, straight curving left, you know, a tee shot where you're hitting to the right, those three shapes and the same to the left. Yeah. But then you've got different tee shot angles. So the tee block angles differently, you've got different wind conditions, you've got elevation, you've got hazards in place. So, so many times understanding your patterns on certain shaped <clears throat> holes for me is really important, right. you know, because I'll see certain patterns emerge. Like I, I, I can see, I'll see a player stand up on a tee shot and I think, oh crap. You know, because I know what's coming, right? You know, because I know their response to exactly right. You know, um, whereas they look at it as a technical issue, and it's like, no, like you just pumped it down the first three holes, like, you know, all would, of a sudden that changed. I would, I'd love your take on this. Um, maybe I'm looking for friends. Um, I would always <laughs> think I, I'm oftentimes inclined to say, and this is coming from a golf teacher, right? This mm. is my bent that looking for the swing floor is kind of the intellectually lazy response to the thing, because to your point, there's so many influences and you haven't mentioned once, you know, what's going on inside nerves and that sort of deal too. So go to the swing. You class, did. Right? Well, well, you did right. You know, like again, um, like a lot of people under stress, you know, movements get shorter, yeah. things get out of sequence, you know, so to blame just the technique is, is not correct. Right. So um, I think, um, you know, like you said, there's a myriad of factors, you know, whether it's, you know, situational. So, you know, I'm leading a tournament or I'm whatever it might be. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's, it's environmental, you know, is it the, the shape of hole, wind conditions, certain hazard locations? Is it technical? Is it, you know, physical that fatigue said it, you know, like there, there are so many things and, and just placing it in one place is like i said is flawed um if you're really trying to help the player and, and that's one of the things with just looking at a swing um without context um yeah. you know you can do a little bit of a job but you're not you're not seeing the whole picture let's do this and really empower the students because look i switch on skillist or whatever or i'm looking for online lessons because most folks do these nowadays it would make sense that I would first go to the preeminent guy or girl who's listed over there. Right. Yeah. But also I think that not might be, that might not be the key for me lesson taker. What sort yep. of take or maybe advice do you have for the viewer slash listener to say, Hey, when you're searching for a teacher, look for this, not just the name per se. Yeah. I think again, they've just got to align with what you're wanting, okay. you know, it's not what the coach wants. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of times, you know, because it's going to sound bad because we're golf coaches, but, you know, it's a business, right? <laughs> and a lot of people set up their business to suit them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, which makes sense, right? You know, you got to book in at this time, you got to do this. And, you know, um, what do you need, yeah. you know, as a, as a student? You know, so if I need, you know, a little bit of contact, a lot of contact. Do I need, you know, somebody that can help me with, you know, short game, longer, you know, like, so again, sort of seeking out the person that's going to align with what you need rather than, um, like you said, just aligning with somebody just because they've got a name in what they do. And asking relevant questions is important to that. Yeah, absolutely. The more, you know, like I say to people all the time, like, I actually saw a, a thing with Sean Foley that I only talked about when Lydia Co turned up, she turned up with like 18 questions. Yeah you know, and then worked it down to where she doesn't have any questions anymore. Right. And, and that's what you want, right. It's like, cause for me, a lot of times, you know, it's actually stripping stuff away for the student that makes it a lot easier for them to focus on what they're trying to do. Right. So, you know, cause we live in a world where there's a, a, a massive amount of information out there. Um, and, you know, a lot of times, <clears throat> you know, I say to people all the time, you know, you know a lot of people struggle because conceptually they're trying to do the wrong things. You know, so once you align the right concepts, you know, you're half a chance at, you know, at, at achieving your goals. <laughs> you know, what? it's so simple. It's almost profound um, uh, along those lines. So for the whole COVID lockdown, you stuck in Australia, mm -hmm. guys playing around the world, including Cam Smith. Mm -hmm. um, I was covering him in the Travelers Championship a couple of seasons ago, Saturday afternoon. He's swinging really nicely. He's got that fade going on because... A little yep. bit prior to that, off the tee, it was fighting a sort of a quick left ball. 
So and that one, so just that, that comes when he tries to hit a draw. <laughs> you know, oh, really? When okay. he tries to hit a draw, you know, unfortunately the, the bad one is the, the block of the hook, right? Because yeah. with his pattern, he's kind of got to manipulate it to hit that shot. Whereas when he works at that little left one, like he might get, you know, one that stays a bit straight, but he generally doesn't get the, the yeah. under and, and left. So, okay. Well, yeah. I was getting yeah. long winded to <laughs> yeah. say this. So you yeah. guys were having these FaceTime lessons and he'd send yeah. footage before the time. You'd have a look, send it back with your take, and then you'd have a bit yeah. of a practice together. Um, yeah. Help, goodness gracious, help the fan listening to you now to yeah. set the camera up properly so they can empower you to see proper stuff. What do you look for if someone's sending you a digital lesson in terms of angles and information video wise? So for me, generally, obviously front on and down the line, sometimes I'll get a, a, a behind. Um, but when I go down the line, I always work along the toe line at hand height okay. is where I video from. Um, and then obviously from the middle of the chest in front on and like at 90 degrees sort of thing. So um, I, I they're the two angles that I've always um, worked on. Um, and then sometimes if I go down the, uh, sorry, from behind, I like to see sort of, you know, how the pelvis is loading, how, um, you know, the body's moving mm. from behind as well, but more often than not, I'll get that sort of front on and down the line. Perfect. Okay. That's that stuff out of the way. Let's learn from the master current number two mm -hmm. in the world. Yep. I, I want to start with the iron play because very few people speak about how well cam hits an iron. Mm. And to me, he always picks, seems to pick the right club. It mm -hmm. doesn't look like he's ever um, afraid of just gearing down and taking some speed off. And, and, mm. and he flats balls beautifully. So, so what is something the fan can learn from mm. watching Cam Smith hit an iron shot when they see him do it? Yeah, so what you just said about sort of taking some speed off and that, you know, he's as good as that that I've ever seen. And, and when he first actually went out on tour, he stopped doing it. Um, and I was like, mate, like, you know, this Why? is one of your biggest tools. Exactly. What are you doing? Like, you know, because I think, again, you get in that environment, everybody's hitting it full and hard. And, you know, it's like, you know, and if you look at um, like his distance wedge plays, sort of, you know, we term oh, nine o'clock so swing or yeah. arm parallel, like he's one of the best in the world, right? So um, I think his ability to sort of match his arms and his body and control, you know, um, speed and loft um, is why his distance control is so good. Um, so, you know, we've always just worked on, you know, that <clears throat> for us, you know, it always starts at the start, you know, so how he sets his body, right? So really big on how he sets his body because to me that allows us to move in a fashion that we can organise the movements properly. So when people talk about rhythm or timing, you know, for me it's just correct sequence of movements, right? So if he can set his body properly and move in a fashion and, and like a lot of, you know, good players when they – set properly and move properly to start the rest of it kind of takes care of itself as simple as that sounds right but you know when you when you're creating the proper loading pack to start then the body's response to move in transition is you know generally how we want it right so a lot of times when you see somebody back up and out of it or you know it's stuff that's happened well before that so so much of our work comes at the start this sounds like another aussie who said this to me and when he said it to me i was like come on adam really it's not that simple now, I know it's like your golf swing fell out of heaven, but I said to him, so what are your keys? And he looked at me and he goes, honestly, Mark, I just want to make sure I'm good at setup, that I'm properly mm. set up, that I'm athletic, I'm ready to go. And so then when I swing the thing, you know, everything seems to figure out. And that's Adam Scott. So mm. This must be, you know. The, well, you know, well, I think, you um, know, know, within reason, right, our body functions a certain way. Yeah. Right. You know, the joints function a certain way, the you know, so if I set them in a certain fashion, they can then move in a way to, you know, to load properly, to load, you know, the, you know, through the ground better, all those sort of things take care in, you know, it's a little bit simplified, but, you know, of course. generally that, 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 that takes care of itself. So, so much of our work is at the start, you know, and when he matches his arms and his body, because one of the things he tends to get, especially the longer the club gets, the arms sort of get a little bit out and off his body. Um, you know, the pressure will sort of move a little bit towards the toe side and then he sort of has to drop it under and, yeah. and that's when he gets stuck with that other shot. And, and generally that doesn't happen when he's hitting shorter to mid irons. Um, so, and hence why he's got that massive control. So, you know, we're always trying to, within reason, make that driver move more like the, the iron move for him. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, to well to that, I, I think this might be a key too because I'm pivoting now to some shorter stuff because around the green he's a symphony as well, and, and, mm -hmm. and it's always to me like the length of the backswing is almost appropriate to the shot. It's not like mm. it goes back to one place and he's finagling halfway down. No, it looks you did like right. he controls distance with how far he's going back. So I, I look at it from, <clears throat> you know, especially with the short stuff, you, you've got three main things you're trying to control, right? right? So you've got the quality of the contact, mm -hmm. okay? You've got the loft of the club and you've got the speed at which it's moving at. Yeah. Okay. So when he, you know, if you watch Cam, how he uses his body, he, he maintains radius really well mm -hmm. right so as he uses his body he maintains that radius so there's no sort of shortening steepening you know backing out through the ball right so his ability to deliver the club back to a consistent low point to get good contact and consistent loft delivery right is really high so he will set the desired loft that he's after so we we set the body in a way that we're setting the loft that we want okay and then he's regulating the speed through his pivot. Okay. So like you said, the length of that swing will, you know, regulate to the distance he's trying to hit. So really, you know, when you look at those three things, you know, we want the contact to be a constant, you know, like even though it is a variable we, for most people, it's, we want it to be a constant. So really it comes back to loft and speed, right? So you watch him hit, um, you know, flop shots, right? You don't see him take this big wide stance and lower the handle. And yeah, the handle will lower, but he'll add a little bit of flex to the knees. He'll keep basically the same base and he'll work his body the same way. So he's not, you know, trying to cut across it. He's not, you know, like if he if he wants to play a lower one, he'll set the ball back maybe a hair. He'll move his body a touch left and then set the, the loft that he needs. And then he'll pivot, you know, the length of swing that he needs relative to that shot. Hey, the setting the loft is a great way of, describing it because you're right uh, when i watch him hit short shots it's from a s narrow stance and, and yeah. you never see any th any major adjustment it's just fine stuff yeah. and the width of the swing is awfully consistent and to me that i mean that is yeah we'll see right as i said we're trying to regulate those things and understand so basically you know within reason he's got one motion yeah. right that he's shortening or lengthening and then he's matching up the desired loft to the shot that he wants to hit. You know, um, in my opinion, and look, you know, this has happened over a long period of time, but, you know, I've been able to strip away because I see, you know, and, and, and in no way, shape or form am I saying what's right or wrong. This is just my opinion. But I see a lot of people trying to hit, you know, four or five different short game shots, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it's really difficult to get good at, you know, all those different shots whereas he's got one within reason basic motion that we know will deliver the club within reason the same way like if you looked at his you know little chip swing to his you know um well nine o'clock swing to his you know if you stopped it at any point through the swing it would look identical That's to that other swing at that point right so he's not overset like even with you know how he, how the wrist works you know for me you know, there's a certain amount of body rotation to arm swing to wrist set, you know, that's happening naturally. Like there's nothing that's sort of forced or out of time yeah. mm -hmm. um, with the, with his motion. So he, like I said before, his ability to a regulate that speed and b deliver that loft the same way massively goes through the roof. And, and I think that's why his ability to hit every shot, um, you know, um, is, is in my opinion, so much easier for him. You have unshackled so many people listening to this with that sort of one swing if you will different yeah. setups and different yep. shots as opposed to yeah we'll, i mean we, we will alter a little bit of ball position and we'll you know so i mean with loft you know obviously if you watch cam you'll hit a lot of shots with a lot of loft you know he hit a lot of shots with the club fairly flat and um <clears throat> you know because the way he's working his body you know he doesn't need to do like he's not getting it out of you know trying to <clears throat> throw the head more or you know yeah. like and, and all these things can work but you know like he's got sort of maximum loft on the club so and then he's instead of getting you know where a lot of people will sort of use a lot more wrist and arm action and, and again it's another way of doing it he's just using more body motion so for me being able to maintain that radius and deliver that club more consistently we don't get the one that sort of swipes underneath or you know enters into the ground a little bit too early or all those things. So I think the the repeatability of that, you know, goes up. 
Now that you say that, I, I, I can see it, how many greenside shots he hits where they're not necessarily fizzing through the air. You know, they've got just enough speed no. to hit and then stop. It's like one jump and then settle down. Yeah. As opposed He's to got good speed to the body, right? So that, you know, a lot of times when you, you know, um, with short game, a lot of people don't use their body. A lot of people use a lot more hand and arm action. And, and like I said, you know, can work really well. He uses a lot more body motion, right? So there's there's still good speed to the club, but it's speed through the pivot, yeah. not through pulling on the grip or, you know, throwing the head too much. And and like you said, he'll play with flight and the ball will stop quick, but it's got enough spin and enough loft to, to do that. Um, and like I said, <clears throat> the other thing, you know, that Ken possesses in, in bucket loads is he's not fearful of hitting that shot. <laughs> True. You know, like he'll hit the shot that's asked for. You know, you look at like at the memorial that one that he he almost had that flop shot, right? Yeah. You know, um, you know he's he's got the guts to hit that shot, right? And and that's a massive part of this as well, right? He's got, you know, obviously, oh, yeah, being biased, I think you know the, the right technique for it, but he's also, um, you know, got the the commitment and the belief in that he can hit every shot. Which is, um, which I just want to touch on what you said about the narrow stance. Mm-hmm. You know, again, the narrow stance allows us to use that body. Yeah. You know, so so the thing is, once you widen out that base, <clears throat> it's very hard to, to pivot properly, right? So then you're relying on more arm swing and more wrist hinge, which then changes sort of the way the club, you know, gets into the ground. You know, because I want to control not only low point, but sort of depth of arc. <clears throat> yes. You know, yeah. whereas once you start to pick it up and swing it down, you know, that changes quite dramatically and i think your, your room for error you know reduces well i actually gave a lesson the other day where the guy was really struggling there were a few issues that were on the go but the root cause was misappropriation of the body and i had him hit shots with a seven iron with his ankles right next door to each other proper posture yep. the whole lot started to iron himself out because from there you can only rotate a yeah, rotate yeah yeah exactly right okay uh i have not got to ask him just yet but i'm going to when i see him uh, in a couple of weeks at the tour championship. Um, mm. When he won the open, you know, he made some fantastic putts coming down the stretch and he played incredibly well. Um, but he spoke of that putt on 17 where he's like, you know, I just set up to it. I got my eye line correct. I think or something he said, and then he goes, yeah. and then I just sort of swung away and, and, yeah. and it was wonderfully simple. And I was like, there's so much to be learned from this. And you've led us into the secret already that the fundamental setup with a mirror on the green every time, this is all he focuses on, and then he swings just you know back and forth with good timing, huh? right? Yeah, you know, for him, and again, like he, he, he's one of those players that's wanted to keep everything as simple as possible over the years, and he's not looking for like it's like you tell me what I need, you know. So it's my job to make it as simple for him as possible, and simple right. means you know a lot of times people you know you hear the term oh you know it's too technical, and it just means that somebody doesn't understand it, right? So you know you need to find as a coach the way to give that message right now fortunately for us you know we've been doing this since he was 10 so we've created kind of our own language and our own you know but like with his putting a lot of times his focus is balance and centered strike you know and and to do that obviously he's got to be in the right sort of posture he's got to have the right sort of ball position he's got to have his eye alignment right you know all those sort of things right but when he feels balanced in his feet and he's striking out of the middle um that's when he feels like he's putting his best, you know? Um, And that's, you know, that's what a player feels, right? You know, like as a coach, you're looking at, you know, a a number of different things to make sure that can happen, but that's how he feels it. Right. Um, The other thing, you know, that, that he would talk about and a lot of good putters talk about, and it sounds sort of counter intuitive, but like they're actually not trying to hold a putt, right? (laughs) They're just trying to roll it online and give it a good chance. It's almost like I'm just going to hit a good enough putt. Exactly what he said. Yeah. That, that, if it goes in, it goes in, you know, whereas a lot of people are trying to hold a putt, you know, which again, sort of that mindset, I think influences movement. Right. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, you know, we'll, we'll over hit the putt or, you know, by trying to hold it, you know, we might change, you know, tempo in transition and all of a sudden, which changes how we deliver the face and things like that. So, you know, for him, it's like, okay, if I can just hit a good putt on this line, you know, um, I'll give it every chance to go in and, you know, I think it's a really good way to look at it. Um, it's kind of like, um, you know, him trying to get to number one in the world. Right? If I do a really good job of my things and I get the opportunity, then it may happen. You know, but if it doesn't, I've, I've done everything in my power to, to be the best I can be. 
yeah you know but you know but focusing on trying to be number one will send you backwards you know because you'll get caught ramps, up in all the other yeah, stuff ramps up the pressure yeah the noise gets crazy well it's just you know but it, it takes your attention away from what's actually important you know so you know if you're focused on what you want which is you know to to prepare well or to you know to hit a certain shot whereas if your focus is on you know trying to beat somebody else or finish in a certain position or you know um that's when things generally go go south wonderful stuff man i could keep you for ages but i know you're so busy um no, no, right. okay, for, right. the, for the folks in queensland or in australia they know where to get you for the folks around the rest of the folks around the world, tell tell them where they can go uh, to Skillist to get you and social media, website, that sort of stuff we've got. Yeah, look, obviously I'm on Skillist. Um, <laughs> I am a little limited in time, but, you know, I'm doing my best to try and get <laughs> you and back me to people. You, um, <laughs> you know, so, you know, I, I, yeah, I try and do my very best there, but, you know, sometimes it's a little bit harder than, uh, than I'd like. But um, just, I guess, Instagram, Grand at Grandfield Golf, you know, um, is the easiest way to find me and, you um, you know, you'll see a little bit of stuff there, not not massive, but you know, a few swings of people that I coach, and um, you know, a few bit of stuff, some stuff about my son and his journey, I guess. And um, yeah, it's you know, it's it's one of those things that, like like I said earlier, I just like helping people, and if I can help somebody, then you know, then I'll do my best to do that. You've done yeoman's work, mate. For what it's worth, you say posting swings. Um, I I was following cam again so he was on the range catching up before the round so i just shot a down the line video of him i think it was with driver the thing mm -hmm. got viewed like over a million times so the yeah, work yeah. he's doing is incredible and folks are gravitating to him because he's a good kid and you know he's he's Look, nice he's, he's a great person and and you know he's he's stayed like you said earlier he stayed true to who he is um obviously he's got a few more shiny things um especially in his garage and <laughs> at the back of his house but you know like as, as a human being he's still the same human and um you know it's been interesting to watch his world change so dramatically and um you know like you said having not traveled for a while and then being at the open and what and watching the amount of love that he gets in the crowd and you know the people that support him and um you know and and he's just a good human being you know and and i think that's one of the things for for, for we've always talked about you know with any of the athletes you know human first athlete second you know and i think if you can stay true to that then you know most guys will be fine Amen, brother. You're preaching early in the morning for you. Thanks so much for your time. You're a legend, Grant. I, I'm no really worries, man. It's not a problem. Going. And more than anything, I'm thankful that you would said, uh, share some of the insider stuff. So thanks, mate. No worries. Not a problem. Anytime.